Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today we're going to be reviewing Icarus by Kay Ancrum, a book I anticipated so severely that I ordered a US special edition to try and cheat my way into receiving a physical copy two months early. That plan didn't work. At least I now have a fancy dust jacket edition to make up for my broken Waterstones copy. This is the first book that I devoured in one sitting since I was 14 and it's one of my favourite reads of the year so far. Let's begin. Icarus Gallagher is a thief. He steals priceless art from and places it with his father's forgeries. For years, Mr. Black has been their target, revenge for his role in the death of Icarus's mother. Icarus adheres to his own strict rules to keep their secret and keep people at bay. Don't let anyone close, don't let anyone touch you, and above all, don't get caught. Until one night, he does. Not by Mr. Black, but by his mysterious son Helios, now living under house arrest in the Black Mansion. Instead of turning Icarus in, Helios bargains for a friendship that breaks every one of Icarus's rules. As reluctance and distrust become closeness and something more, they uncover the bars of the gilded cage that has trapped both their families for years. Icarus is determined to escape, but his father's first revenge shows no sign of fading, and soon it may force Icarus to choose the escape he's dreamed of or the boy he come to love. Kian Kramason, who I always describe as a once-in-a-lifetime kind of author, and the release of Icarus continues to prove it. This is the story of Icarus Philomorus Gallagher, named after the plant rather than the Greek figure, the loneliest boy Ancrum has ever written, and Helios the sun in his sky. It's an intimate reimagining of the tale of Icarus and a star-crossed love story between a young art thief and the son of the man he's been stealing from. It's part suspenseful thriller and part contemporary romance, and it's the return to the unconventional vignette chapters and sparse little prose that made many of us fall in love with Ankrum through The Wicker King. This book is presented with such sincerity, consideration, and a deep understanding of our relationship to history and art. It's about fan family, neglect, generational curses, and figuring out a way to escape the circumstances and chase the freedom you deserve. The most distinct own voices representation from Icarus in comparison to Ancrum's other works is the intersex character, and he's seen through the eyes of someone who loves and understands him instantly, without explanation, cowardice, or confusion. Representation in love interests is so valuable and important to me in seeing all the odd and ugly parts of yourself turned into something beautiful because someone loves you anyway, someone saying that you were made the same way as angels. There's also a reference to an insect statue without a known creator within the book and Ancrum says she chose it because it belongs to humanity now and she liked the idea of a pivotal piece of art and the story being an artist unknown. It's also the acknowledgement that there have been people who exist out of the sex binary longer than we have had the words to describe them, and instead they have been documented in art. Icarus's character also suffers from ehlers Danlos syndrome, which I believe is also own voice's representation. He complains of pain throughout the entire book, and abuses his hypermobility to be good at sports and breaking and entering. He spent his life watching his father essentially breaking down and has begun to wear braces himself, inheriting it. Both are in complete unawareness of the root of their problems and both use insufficient coping mechanisms and physical support. Helios noticing these symptoms and simply telling Icarus that EDS is a thing that exists circles back to one of the key themes in the novel, the act of noticing. Teenagers always notice and are the first to see when something is wrong with their friends. Icarus notices what Helios refuses to say and Icarus's friends notice the bruises under his eyes and see through his jokes about his tiredness. Icarus tries to save Helios without knowing a rescue mission is brewing for him too. Ultimately, Icarus is a book about opening yourself up to weakness and vulnerability. There are so many books written about the weak learn to be strong, and less so about how hardening yourself to survive has a cost, and the bravery of beginning to remove that protection and allowing yourself to grow. But this one is a love letter to the value of emotional intimacy and human connection, as all Ancrum books are, and it never gets less heart-wrenching to read about. Icarus gives his time and companionship to a boy in a cage, and he nearly gives his life, and he does so without hesitation. He's also a character who has to learn about tenderness and how to hug people for the first time in his teens from his friends, and they choose to love him over and over again, no matter how many times he tries to push them away. I think Book Browse said it best, flying too close to the warmth of the sun, to the unique light offered by each person, is not a matter of gross overreach, but is, in fact, a necessity, a basic human condition of humanity and interconnectedness, even at the risk of violent crash and burn. This book was one of my favourite reads of the year so far, and I am gnawing at the bars of my enclosure, in anticipation of what Kate Ancrum will release next. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!